everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be crocheting an easy simple rose. This pattern is very simple and easy and only requires three rows and some very basic stitches. Now what you're going to need um, is some worsted weight yarn. I have two different kinds here. This is a Lion Brand Superwash Merino that's actually a lightweight yarn. Um, and then I have some just Lion Brand Vanna's Choice which is a worsted weight. You can use either one with this pattern, a lightweight or a worsted weight. And I'm using an H or 5 millimeter hook. Just go ahead and use an H hook no matter whether you're using light or worsted weight yarn. This pattern will work great for both. You can even use bulky weight yarn or super bulky yarn. You would just need to adjust your hook size to um, fit that type of yarn. So going ahead and getting started, go ahead and create a slip knot. And once we've made a slip knot, get that onto your hook. And then we're going to start with our foundation chain. So remember, chain stitches just yarn over and pull through. And we're going to chain any multiple of 10 plus 1. So any multiple of 10, that can be 10, 20, 30, 50, or as long as you want it to be. The longer you make this chain, uh, the larger your rows will be in the end. Just for reference, in my sample here, I am chaining 41. So 40 is my multiple of 10 plus 1. And once you have your foundation chain all worked up, we can go ahead and start with row one. So row one, we're going to skip to the second chain in our uh, row here. So there's the second, and we're just going to single crochet into that second chain from our hook. After you single crochet, chain two. We're gonna skip one stitch, work in the second one, and single crochet once again. We can see here that that creates a little gap with that chain two and skipping a stitch. Those gaps are exactly what we're looking for and how we're going to create our petals. So again, chain two, we're going to skip one stitch, work in the second stitch, and single crochet. We're just going to repeat this all the way down. Single crochet, chain two, skip one, chain two, skip one, and single crochet, chain two, skip one, and go ahead and just complete the entire row. We can see what this is looking like. It's starting to curve around a little bit because we are creating more stitches uh, than there are foundation chain stitches. So that's exactly what we want. Here we are at the very end. And after you finish all of those, uh, that repetition, you wanna chain two and turn. So we can see here what the back of our work is looking like. So after we chain two and turn, we're gonna work into this first chain two space. So into the gap itself and go ahead and work a double crochet. So there's one double crochet into the gap. We're gonna make two more double crochets for a total of three. We're working our first petal here, and this is the last row of this project. So here we have three double crochets. We're gonna chain one, and then we're going to slip stitch down into the exact same chain space we've been working in. So into the same space that we've worked our petal, and now we're going to work into the next chain space and slip stitch once again. We can see here that this is how our first petal should be looking. And then we're going to just chain up one, skip into the next chain space, and we're going to work three more double crochets and we're just going to keep repeating this until we've worked about a third of the way down uh, our row. So here's our second double crochet and our third double crochet, chain one, slip stitch into the same spot, and then slip stitch in the next chain two space, and chain up one to repeat. So there are our first two petals. Now moving forward with uh, row three, this will change depending on what your um, multiple of 10 was, but uh, the best way for me to describe what you're doing here is you're working the first uh, third of the way down your row with double crochets. Now we're going to change this in just a moment, but what you want to do is just kind of eyeball it. If you want to count your chain spaces and be very exact, you can count your chain spaces and then divide by two and then that will give you how many petals you should have and then you can then divvy that up into thirds. Um, but if you want to, you can just eyeball it like I did. Everything will turn out okay, I promise. There's not an exact science to this rose making. And if everyone comes out a little bit differently, that's kind of the magic 
of flowers as well. You don't want them to be identical. So um, here I am still continuing with my double crochet scallops. We can see here what this should be looking like. I have four so far and I'm going to keep continuing. Once we've worked about a third of the way down our uh, row here, we can see here I'm about a third of the way, give or take. Again, doesn't have to be exact. There are no rules. Um, once you're about a third of the way down, go ahead and repeat what you've been doing, but change to half double crochets. So you, here you can see that I'm working, instead of three double crochets, I'm working three half double crochets. And then we're still going to chain one after we work our three and slip stitch into the same spot. So exactly the same process, exactly the same um, repetition, the way that we're doing things, just work half double crochets instead of double crochets. We can see here that the half double petal is a bit smaller than the double petal. That's exactly what we want. We want the petals to get smaller as we go on. And go ahead and work the next uh, third of your row with these half double crochet petals. Or uh, if you want to um, do it exactly how I have, I'm just going to make the last one or two petals single crochet because what we're doing is getting smaller. So for me, I want the last two petals to be single crochet, so I'm counting the last four um, chain spaces, and I know that I need to stop and change to single crochet petals once I get to that spot where I'm four spaces from the end. And that four spaces, of course, is a petal and then a slip stitch and a petal and a slip stitch in each of those spots, respectively. So here you can see I'm still working my half double crochet petals. I should wind up with probably four of these as well, but again, it's going to be different no matter what multiple of 10 you do. It's going to be different from mine and could be different from other roses that you make, and that's totally fine. So here you can see how it's progressing. I'm almost here to the end. So I have four double crochet petals. I have four half double crochet petals. So everything is going nicely at this point. And I have a few chain spaces left to work my single crochet petals. So here you can see that I'm working my next petal and I'm doing it just as I have been, but with three single crochets instead of double or half double crochets. So this is going to make a much smaller petal, still chaining one and slip stitching down into the petal space. And we're going to slip stitch in the next chain space. I should have two chain spaces left. Perfect. I've chained up one and I'm going to work single crochets into the next chain space. Three single crochets. There's three chain and slip stitch. And then I've just slip stitched into the last spot and I've snipped my yarn and pulled through. So now you can see here that I have a couple of single crochet tiny petals there at the end. Here are one, two, three, four doubles, one, two, three, four half doubles, and then my two singles. You can see that the single is much, much smaller than the doubles. So now to complete this rose, all we're going to do is basically roll it up like a little sushi roll, nice and tight. So we're going to take the single crochet where we just finished working, and we're going to uh, tightly wrap the uh, row of petals around. So what we want to do is from the bottom you want to see that foundation chain, all of those foundation chain stitches in a spiral, and we want to keep the bottom as flat as possible. So as you're rolling this, make sure that it doesn't form a cone shape on the bottom. It should be flat and that's what's going to make your petals kind of fan out and lie nicely like a rose. So I rolled mine a little bit too tight and I want to loosen it up just a little bit so that those petals can fan out and not look like a rose bud. But you can make this as tight or as loose as you prefer. Um, kind of adjust things, wiggle things around, and get them where you want them. We can see roughly how things are going to be looking once everything is secure and sewn together. Now go ahead and maintain that shape and flip it over. Again, we should see a flat spiral here, which is what I'm seeing. Now we should have snipped our tails with plenty of room to weave in our ends, um, but we also need to weave it in a special way to make sure that everything is secure. So now that I'm exactly, perfectly, uh, absolutely sure that everything is lying how I want it to, I don't want anything to move, you can use sewing pins to keep things in place or just move very carefully. Grab your tapestry needle and go ahead and thread one of those ends. I'm choosing to thread the 
end from the very beginning in the center of my rows just because it's a bit longer. Move your other tail out of the way and I'm just going to sew down and through the very center of the rows and work through those foundation chain spiral stitches and come out through the edge. I know that this is a little bit tough to explain but it, having the visual aid really helps with this one so you can understand where to stitch. So here I've come out through the outer ring. I'm going to come down and back through the center. And basically we're just going to do running stitches in and out and in and out from the center, kind of like a fan or a sun shape. Make sure that your uh, last petal, the outer row of petals, is exactly where you want it and you're stitching into that row as well because this is a flat spiral. Um, it's easy for those things to kind of get lost and forgotten and drop to the side. So make sure that you're holding everything in place exactly how you want it and just come in and out through the center and out through those very outer uh, chain, foundation chain stitches. And after you've finished that, you can go ahead and weave that end in. And then we're going to thread the other tail the one that is right toward the very outer uh, petal. And what we're going to do is secure this petal down. You can see that it's kind of out here loosey-goosey. And we're going to secure it down by threading that tail. And then we're going to just sew down this very outside edge. So come up through the first double crochet in the petal. And then we're just going to look at it from the front side, position it how we want, nice and tucked in, as a petal would naturally look and then sew through that petal below it from the back side so that you're not uh, creating visible stitches here. This is just a little trick I like to finish things off and make sure that it looks natural and it doesn't look too much like you wrapped up you know, the row of stitches that we did. It makes it look a lot more seamless and just a lot better. So we're going to weave in this end on the back side of things here and then once we've weaved both of these ends nice and tightly, we are done with this rose. Now remember that you can make this rose in any size, any color, um, and they are great for spring projects, for Valentine's Day projects tomorrow especially. Um, the possibilities are really endless with this rose pattern. So I hope you guys enjoy it and go and make all kinds of beautiful, colorful roses. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm definitely going to be making more videos in the near future, so definitely watch out for that and leave me a comment if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.